Hi everyone, and welcome to our second Q&A uh, for our 12 Days of Christmas event. Um, I'm going to ask for your consideration before this, because a lot of the people in our chat and our development team are not native English speakers, so there's going to be some weirdness when we talk. Please be kind. <laughs> uh, you can post questions for everyone here, which is me, the art director, Jedi, which is on this side of me, um, which is one of our 3D artists, our main environment artist. Below me is Rayan, which some people might call superior when they talk to him. Don't be alarmed that we just work with nicknames. Yes, and all the way on the bottom of the screen is Chris, which is one of our content artists. Um, yeah. We have a few questions that we accumulated beforehand in our Discord. We'll get to those first, and as you post more of them in chat, we will get to them. We have a few questions that we accumulated beforehand in our Discord. We'll get to those first, and as you post more of them in chat, we will get to them. Okay. So the first question we have is actually from Gensega on our Discord server, and he's asking. Um, on the stream yesterday, uh, we did a really nice GTFO stream yesterday, if you haven't checked it out, go to that after this one ends. Um, Cal mentioned the difficulty of designing visually distinct spaces due to the game mainly taking place in a spaceship. So how does the art team work around this? Okay, so um, Jedi, you work on most of the environments, and Chris, you provide a lot of the concepts for those. Do you want to tackle some of those questions? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it just comes down to utilizing a lot of different mechanical designs in these really tight and dark spaces. Uh, a lot of certain areas. A lot of just trying to uh, make things unique <laughs> in each space. Um, yeah. Okay. yeah it, it's it's hard to do like really large open areas because uh, there's just a lot of like tight corridors. So making those look unique is kind of been a challenge but I, I think we've done a good job with it so far yeah I think so and um, I would like to add to that that a lot of the stuff you've seen in trailers so far has been um, part of a single area which means we have a lot of different concepts that we can't show you yet that are going to be very different we're not just going to do tight spaces we're also going to do wide open spaces because the Rooster is a very big ship, after all it's housing a very big crew and like going on long journeys. They're not just going to walk around in corridors and encounter scary monsters there. They're also going to have to eat to sleep, all of these general things. So I would say most of them are defined by their function and by how you would try to design them so a crew actually lives in them. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And by how you would try to design them so a crew actually lives in them. That's a good way to put it. Okay, so Ray and Chris, anything to add to that or should we move on to the next one? Um, I think what I could add on to okay, it so is uh Ray and Chris, I would say the challenge uh like Jedi said was making sure the designs are very clear as to what sections of the ship serve what purpose and with that challenge we simply look at real life scenarios where we would be in some sort of building and each building has different sections and each section has different purposes and most of the time when it's a really important building, like let's say a hospital, we would be able to tell what room does what based off of what equipment we see in there, what um, color, how much lighting there is, if there's chairs, if there's 
uh, equipment. So I would say that would be the main challenge is just making sure that everything has a design to it and a purpose to it and is easily recognizable to uh, what would be the crew or in this case the player so the player knows where they are and just making that look good in a horror game is the challenge of making it look uh, functional as well and believable. Great. In that case, I'm going to move on to the next one, which is one of our new patrons from yesterday. Uh, Merlock Rampage is asking, uh, what do you feel is the most difficult part of design? Is it the style or the look? Uh, I would say that it wouldn't be the style uh, other than just design. And like I said previously, it's, it's just making sure something looks believable. Um, when it comes to style, it's just making sure we're not stepping on any toes when it comes to any designs or uh, making something that's very familiar. And in this case, we're trying to make something really different and something new and refreshing. So we're trying to make sure that when it comes to style or designs, it's something brand new, something interesting and making sure it looks scary. Uh, and I would say that's that's part of the that's part of the big challenge there is making sure something looks scary, but also new. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think the biggest design philosophy for us is that everything needs to look like it has a purpose. So you try to design a real thing, like it could work in real life, and then try and make it look sci-fi. <laughs> so basically you go from what does the thing to do to how does it look like, not the other way around. I think a, a large part of our style is that we try to keep the designs grounded in reality where uh, we draw a lot of inspiration from uh, like metal smithing factories or submarines, just very utilitarian, metallic, square, boxy kind of look that you can find in real life without doing too much sci-fi sci-fi-ification to it. <laughs> uh, we want it to be a very capable space, so it's uh, very important that it mirrors reality so that when you get scared in it, it's more believable. It's great. How about you, Rain? How do you design like the characters to... Is it more challenging to get the style right or the look? What's the most challenging aspect of it? Well, for me... It often helps, I have many good concepts to work off of at the point where we reach the part where I can start designing the characters in 3D. What I do find is quite often trying to convey the look of things in 3D often offers the most interesting challenges on the design front, trying to see what looks I can go about in interpreting it and such. But as I often find, the style usually comes pretty well. Especially in the early blockout stages of things. But having the look, then, the sort of functionality, having that co-mingle with the style is usually an interesting challenge. But one I quite enjoy. Great. Thank you. So, we have another one from Beluga King, who's asking where we get our inspiration for the creature designs. Um, I think I'd like to start answering that because uh, the enemy you see in most of our gameplay trailers, uh, both the Skulker and the Stealth Walker, uh, we mostly went into nature, because nature is extremely scary. It's like the best place to start for anything, because there's always... Like, just the amount of people that are afraid of spiders and snakes tells you how scary nature is, and there's much more scary animals out there than those. So we try and look at a bunch of different animals, how they work, how we can combine them into something more scary, why something would evolve like that. 
and then we go into the technology world and see what kind of machinery would be really scary and then we combine those two aspects because the atmosphere as we have shown before works with both um, robotic enemies and with organic enemies so we try and combine the two aspects to make a really really weird organic feeling that's just as close to human as they can be without completely going off the rails. Um, Anyone have anything to add to that? Because like there's still a lot. Like Chris, you draw all the concepts for the enemies. Yeah. Um, a lot of the inspiration, of course, came from nature, like we were we were just talking about. But um, I guess for me, it was just. Uh, not really any source specifically because <laughs> I remember uh, when I joined the team I was told to make a tall creature and it was called the stilt walker and I was really excited for that because I kept coming up with a bunch of concepts in my mind already uh, and specifically with the stilt walker I remember I wanted to make something really gross and spindly and spider like and it was really unique because it had no feet. It was just little, little stabby feet, uh, stilts. And it was really fun to work with that and also make it unique. Thank you. I think one thing I'd like to add to that is that we've also come a very long way. Like, it took a really long time to get to where we are now, where our creatures have like a unique look to them and they are believable. When we first started out, our enemies looked quite generic and it took a while to refine that into something that has a distinct feeling like that's our enemies and they are scary. Great. Um, I think that question is answered with that. Uh, the next one is from Pop Mansa in space, and he's asking what the inspiration for Samuel's suit was. really fun trying to make a believable and functional looking suit and something that immediately gave off the design of a first responder whether it would be a firefighter or some like medic and in this case it was definitely a medic um and for that we really wanted to use a color scheme that was very familiar as well 
So we went with whites and teals and, and sort of off greens. Very similar to like a medic scrubs or a nurses, like scrubs, anything like that. And also make it look like it could handle space. Now, of course, not deep space, but just in case of any emergency, low pressure or some sort of hole breach, it could be something that sustains in that environment. And we wanted to make the suit overall look very sustainable. And that was a big challenge for me to do the suit designs because I specialize in creatures, but I think I did pretty well doing the suit designs and making it believable. I'm, I'm very happy with how it came out. Great. Um, I'm just hearing from chat that there seems to be some audio problems and some echo, um, so I'm just talking in the background. Don't worry, we're trying to solve it, but we're just going to continue for now because I hear the echo as well, and at least it's more silent than we are. <laughs> um, okay, so the next question is, Camstan is asking... Um, how far into the game is the Patreon demo at the moment? Um, I can quickly answer that. The demo is quite early in the game. It's not exactly the beginning, but it plays after like the first bigger set pieces. It's like one of the more quieter first parts of the game. So you're not spoiling anything if you play it, if that's what you're asking. So. The next question he has is, um, how much of the earlier trailers is no longer in the game? Um, they know the suit has changed, but they're curious what else has changed since then. I'd say most everything changes all the time, as the, is the nature of game development. You keep a lot of stuff, you chuck out a lot of stuff, and you try to refine it so it becomes one coherent thing. But I guess a lot of you will recognise what parts of your work we had to refine or change or get rid of and what, which parts are still in here. So maybe there's like one thing you were quite sad that we had to leave behind? I think for me personally it was, it was the, the suits, but they got better as we refined them and improve the design, so I'm completely fine with the changes. Okay, great. Um, I just have to quickly scroll up in the questions to find like a new one. There we go. Um, we also have a question about the footage you can see in commons for a puck, and they're asking what the puck is. Um, the puck is a per called a personal utility computer, and it's basically Edward's companion for all this. It's like his personal wrist computer. Um, most of the UI is on this, and the player will basically manage their inventory and everything else that we're going to chuck at them, including like law and everything on that. If you look at the buttons on it, you might be able to deduct a lot of the function that it will have in a full game. I can't say more than that. Then the next question is from Coco, um, has no pineapples, with what aspect of the visual what aspect of the visual design took the longest for you to get just right? That might be one for Chris again. I think, again, it was probably the, the suit that Edwards has because we went through so many versions of it. Uh, I remember the first one I designed, it was a suit. It didn't give off any vibe of any purpose. But it was a good start. It was a good placeholder for what we had. 
And as time went on, we kept adjusting things, his backpack, his his legs, his helmet especially. Uh, and over time, we made sure that it came across as something very unique and something new, something that could give you a glimpse into the universe that the game takes place in seeing what kind of medical gear is used and what sort of services are available, I suppose, especially with this medical suit that uh, we have for him. Um, But as time went on, we definitely refined that suit, and hopefully this suit sticks around. And if it doesn't, that means we have something better in line. So I would say... Yeah, that's the one thing that's had the most changes. Great, thank you. Um, if I look a bit absent, I'm just trying to solve the technical issues on the back end whenever someone else is speaking. I haven't forgotten about all of you. Does anyone else have anything that they think they took a really, really long time to get right? But they're really proud they did it. I think the environment itself has come a long way. Uh, In the beginning of the project, I actually started as a 2D artist, and through over the years of working on this game, I've actually learned how to 3D model, and I uh, became one of the members working on the world in the game. Uh, And we've always had a kind of cool dark style for the world in mind but uh over the years we've really tuned it in into what it is now and uh i'm really really proud of how much work and detail that we've been able to put into everything i think so yes because in the beginning when we started out the environments looked a bit like a mixture between dead space and star wars yeah and i think after like a few experiments we found our own style and we refined it for a very long time and yeah i agree like a lot of members also changed a lot like a lot of them changed positions a lot of them specialized in something they didn't do before and i think that's helped us a lot get it in getting it right i mean you did most of the environments that you can see in the gameplay trailer that's running in the background for us so i think that's a testament (laughs) yeah (laughs) I think that question is answered with that as well. Can I add something to that question? Of course! Uh, for me also, I'd say uh, the overall creature aesthetic also went through quite a few different iterations during our development. Especially from our, some of our early variants that were seen in the EGX build. We went through various styles with the deformities and sort of experimenting with what translated best to our aesthetic and also just what looked the most ghastly. I know throughout we went through a few different styles and ended up settling on something that just looked really grotesque, which becomes more evident in some of our latest, like the Skulker, which I'm quite proud to have had the opportunity to work on with regards to getting that whole aesthetic up there and also being able to work with the uh, concepts provided for them too. It's been a really fun journey. Yes. I think as we refined and continue to refine our workflow, especially for the characters, and get more research in, because most of the first enemies were just based on sketches, and we just kept them refining the process more, so they're like more grounded in other stuff, and I think that's improved the design a lot, as well as the fact that all the artists on the project grew with it. Like, everyone started getting better at what they were doing as well, because they were doing it more. As it's the nature of like passion projects that turn into something professional. Great. So, Gensaiga is back and has editor's nickname to also say Why Pines and says, What's your design philosophy in regards to creating visually distinct items, enemies, and objective markers while still remaining consistent with the overall aesthetic, especially as the game takes place in darker than, a darker than normal environment? Especially as the game takes place in 
I think I'll start with this one and say that the game has very dark and very light environments. <laughs> um, it's just that the ones that are featured in the trailer are of the more dingy sort. There's not just going to be dark areas, not just going to be light areas. We're aiming to get like a good mix of all of them in. Because just like your house, like the hall might be a bit dingy, but the living room might be really bright because there's windows and you want to feel comfortable in there. The hall is just something you're passing through. So you're following the same philosophy for designing a ship. So hallways might be a bit less inviting than, I don't know, the habitation where the crow lives. I would say for right now, we've mostly been focusing on making items in the environment uh, really clunky and heavy looking and the same goes with any weapons or items we would use or uh, show off we want to make sure it has a familiar silhouette perhaps but as for design we want to make it look heavy and very very armored looking unless we decided to do something that was a bit more slim and of course if we did that that would be something that would have a different purpose or something that would uh, serve perhaps a more delicate purpose. <laughs> Yes, I mean the area we're showcasing at the moment in the background is very machinery heavy um, so the items match that the environment they're supposed to be used in and if you have a different environment they're obviously going to change according to the environment. The challenge is more to have like a consistent style across all the decks in my opinion. Great. Um, does anyone have anything to add here, or should we move on? I will take that deafening silence as move on. <laughs> um, and Dra Draken is asking um, if any of us have gotten scared by our own work before. Never. <laughs> At least personally, I've not. Fair. I have. I. The amusing irony for me, despite having have worked on modeling all of these creatures, I am a very easily frightened and squeamish person. I remember one time in a prior test, uh, one of my creations decided to run at me out of nowhere and I screamed and nearly fell out of my chair. Yeah, I mean, for me it's also like that. Um, I designed a lot of the levels and I playtest them obviously thousands of times to see if the level design makes sense, if the placement of objects makes sense, if we need to change the lighting. But afterwards um, Gail, our audio director, went in and added a bunch of sounds and I completely was hit by a jump scare where he put in some um, sounds of something crawling above me in the vents and I definitely jumped in my chair from that. <laughs> Yeah, playing uh, our game definitely has its moments. Uh, during the creation process, it's really hard to get scared by a wall, but uh, some of the ideas I can come up with, like, uh, just in terms of, like, monster concepts or, you know, stuff in my other work, sometimes I can get creeped out by that, so I try to bring that into the game as well. To be fair, when you design something like the level that we're showcasing the Patreon demo right now, uh, there's almost like this one-upmanship of who can create something scarier and the end result that you end up with after everyone has had their fingers in it will scare people that have worked on other parts because they're not aware what the others have done yet. Yeah. <laughs> like, I will never, like, when I play the entire level without audio in the beginning, it's not really scary. But at the end, when everything is in, you just, when it all plays together, you just go, fuck, this is actually tense. Okay. Yeah. Then we have Pogmans in space with our next question, and that is, what animal, insect, or plant was the inspiration for the stilt walker? I can't disclose this at this time, but uh, 
there might be some lore that will explain a bunch of it in the game. <laughs> so, then we're getting to the questions in the YouTube chat because we've gotten through the ones on our Discord now. Um, the first one is, which was your most favourite thing to design so far and who had to design it? So, Jedi, what was your favourite thing to build? Hmm. So, Jedi, what was your favourite thing to build? The current hallway, I think, when we did, we did a lot of research into uh, parallax occlusion mapping, uh, and when we actually used that for those parts of the hallway, that turned out really cool. I was very excited by working on all of that. Yeah, it was a bit sad that we couldn't use all of the research because obviously the game still needs to run on machines that are not a rendering farm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you could play the game at two frames a second, it would look even more amazing than it does now. <laughs> so, Rain, what was the nicest thing you've built and that you're the most proud of? I would say for me... It would probably be the, uh, one of the suits that's briefly shown off in the trailer, the heavy suit. That, for me, was probably one of the most interesting and in-depth models I've had the experience to work on so far, and it was really nice seeing it all come together, uh, iterating and changing up parts of the design from the original concept based on feedback from the rest of the team, and also what... I found translated best to 3D, and all in all, I am incredibly happy with how it turned out, and I am excited to see what people think. I agree, it was a very impressive and long project, because it was a giant mechanical suit. There was so much to consider, and I'm really happy about how it turned out. So, Chris, Likewise. what was your favourite concept to work on? I'm still gonna stand on this hill of the stilt walker was my favorite one that we've shown off. Um, I'm sure in time, with the things we have in concept, uh, of course I can't speak of them, but I'm sure I'll have other favorites and hopefully there'll be others that <laughs> will be rival to the stilt walker that fans also like. I mean, there will be plenty of other monsters. There have been plenty of other monsters that we can't yet talk about. Um, but yeah, there are plans. The next one is not a question, so I'm going to skip that one. <laughs> but it's a real nice compliment. Someone is really glad about the graphics and the art direction, and it says it's insane, so... <laughs> So, the next question is, um, do we also design the suits, and if so, what's your favourite suit in this game? I think we've answered that, um, with Rayan at least, because his favourite suit is clearly the heavy suit. Um, currently we've only shown two suits publicly, so I guess pick and choose yours. Mine's definitely Edward's suit. Guess, pick and choose yours. Fair. How about you, Jedi? Of uh, ones that we've shown off? Yeah. So his standard suit or the heavy suit? How about you, Jedi? The heavy suit is really, really cool. I really <laughs> love how bulky it is. Yeah. So his standard suit or the heavy suit? It is. It's really satisfying like, to walk in as well. Yeah. I think I have to go with that one as well. Just because it's the most sophisticated one we have. Edward's standard suit is really great, and especially when like the fabric effects kick in and it flaps in the wind and that kind of stuff, it's really believable. But I think the sheer mechanical, I don't know, impressiveness of the heavy suit kind of overshadows that. Which is great, because it's supposed to be impressive. <laughs> 
The next thing we have is what was the most difficult thing to create, which we've already gone over, so I'm going to skip that one. Um, what are the designs for the weapons in the game, and how are they going to work uh, to combat in combat against the monsters? So, the weapons. We can talk about the design process for them, but we can't quite tell you how they're going to work in combat against monsters. We can tell you that the syringe gun fires different kinds of medication at enemies, but we can't tell you what those do. That's something for you to find out when you actually play it yourself. Um, so, how we design a weapon. Usually starts with Chris as well. Um, and with... Um, I'll lead QA. That was in the other stream as well. Uh, Jeff is an advisor on that because he's he has more f he has more guns than I have shirts in my drawer, basically. <laughs> um, and he knows everything about them, so he advises us on that so they actually work like real guns would work. So Chris. <laughs> Um, yeah, of course, we start off with something that is familiar to a, a real gun. Um, but I guess in this case, I'll talk about the syringe gun. Uh, that one, we wanted to come up with something really cool. So, of course, when people think of syringe guns, I don't know. Some people might think of a long tube thing that shoots out a whole syringe but we wanted to do something a bit different and I'm glad with what we came up with this little cool flippy device that is believable and I could see it happening uh, sometime in the future I would hope that would be that'd be pretty cool um, but with that we just kind of wanted to go with a lot of medical device inspiration rather than a real gun other than just loading it uh like i would say like a double barrel shotgun uh how the front end comes down but other than that we just wanted to make it more medical inspired rather than real weapons which just to quickly cut in is because edwards is a doctor so he would obviously be more familiar with medical tools than with guns Yeah, thank you for telling us that, Chris. Um, does anyone else want to cut in, in that, on that question, or should we move on? Okay. Um, what type of references or inspiration did you guys use while creating these creatures? A lot of very disturbing references that we can't show you because uh, I don't think the age rating would survive that. <laughs> yeah, I used violence. As, as inspiration, I suppose. Um, also, a bunch of medical conditions that are real disturbing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I have never looked at so many either mutilated, destroyed, or limbs that are just oozing with fluids you don't want to look at. Uh, I'd like to add to that that we don't uh, make our artists look at them. <laughs> they don't have to. It's completely free choice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like, we don't do the same thing that they do for Mortal Kombat and make it a mandatory thing. Don't worry about that. Um, Superior is just... Sorry, Rayan is just very special in that regard. He makes those into something very good. <laughs> yes, it was completely voluntary. I know in my case, for a lot of the modelling, I used a great many references of medical conditions and for uh, a lot of the more contorted enemies, uh, car crash victims, it was very morbid, uh, but worth it for creating these truly grotesque entities. I think oh my goodness, the horror. Yes, uh, and we're very glad that you survived that without any visible impact. <laughs> Indeed. Thankfully, my mind has been hardened by the experience. I'm pretty versatile by it all. Yes. Uh, 
the results definitely speak of your skill. So, um, what did you guys have to change about enemies, and did they ever change in both art and concept over time? We have tackled this, but um, as I said before, we started by just basing them on sketches and they look, just made them look cool and scary. And now we have a more sophisticated workflow of going from research to concept and then to model. And I think that's helped a lot. So, um... Ooh, that's an interesting one. So, in your opinion, what monsters do you think are the most horrific? Uh, everyone choose one that has already been published, please. <laughs> How about we start with Rayan this time? <laughs> probably mention one that hasn't been talked about as much. I'd say for the most horrific for me, probably the Skulker. Just based on how grotesquely its old torso is twisted and the way it moves, the way it breathes. There's horrible glowing eyes. Like, it's a very close call between that and the stilt walker for me. There's just something... I don't know, based on how it looks, something existentially frightening about the Skulker. I, I, I wouldn't want to encounter that thing, IRL, that's for sure. Oh, I don't think anyone wants to encounter any of the creatures in real life. <laughs> Very true. Oh, I don't think anyone wants to encounter any of Okay, Jedi. I Which have one? to say, the stilt walker, I just really like how lanky it is. Okay, Jedi. It's, uh, Which one? very much like a... I don't want to say Spider-Man, but, uh... <laughs> man spider, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Great. Chris. I mean, it's like it's like getting me to choose one of my favorite kids, but uh, Stiltwalker is still really cool, and I do agree with <laughs> with the Skulker being really cool. It's it's so gnarly. It's it's such a distorted human figure, and when designing that, it was really fun making. I guess playing with the human form like Putty. And t literally turning it upside down, and it was just really fun making that thing. Um, I think it's just as fun doing it with any design we have. But for now, it's just the Skulker and the Stillwalker. I like them both equally. I think for me personally, I have to go back to like an older one we published, like a really old one, uh, because albeit our execution wasn't. Um, the best one. I still like the concept a lot. Uh, and I don't know if you guys remember that. That's the melting pot. Um, oh, I remember. Yes, oh, it was gosh, one. It's been so long ago. It was one of the first ones you've made, Ray, and yes. <laughs> Indeed. So, um, for everyone that hasn't been following us for ages, uh, the melting pot is an enemy where a robot fused with a human being to form a new entity. Um, and it was done really early, and it was like the uh, our picture on our website for a very long time uh, before we had any real content on there. It was not compared to the stilt walker and uh, to the skulker. It wasn't as sophisticated because obviously we were far early in development. But I still think the design choices we made for that were really great. Unfortunately, it's scrapped now. So. <laughs> So, the next question is, if you're able to tell us, uh, how long did it take to fully develop the design for the stilt walker? Chris, that's a question for you. I would say, I would say pretty quickly, actually. I, once I did the first concept and I'm looking back at it now, it, it's pretty, pretty much been the same other than just tweaking it here and there occasionally but i think that was one of the few where it was just the first concept of it was the one and it hasn't changed much to my knowledge everything i've seen of it is pretty spot on to what i have here on paper quote unquote paper um but that one yeah we nailed that one right away 
I think so, yes. Like, there were a bunch of iterations for the Skulker, for example. There were a bunch of iterations for the suits, but like the first design for the Stilt Walker was so clear and so unique that we just went, yeah, yeah, we're going with this. <laughs> um, and also the fact that you ha haunted the server forever with your um, anime version of it. We couldn't oh, remove yeah, it afterwards. Right. Still love it, Chan. <laughs> Exclusive emote, only in our server. Um, yeah. Then, the next question is if the enemies will melt or disintegrate and tear. You will find out! <laughs> uh, it's not been published yet, so we can't show you what happens to the enemies. As we worked on the enemies, did the change in design ever affect their future presence in gameplay, such as the role in combat changing or their style of attacking changing? I think since we started out always with a special intent for each enemy, what they're supposed to be before we start designing them, it's rather you have a concept of what you want your enemy to be, and then you add the visuals to make it disturbing around that. So I don't think the gameplay purpose has ever changed, because they always start from the purpose. But feel free to correct me if you think I'm wrong. Yeah, they, they most of the time start with just a purpose, or sometimes they're just approached with a, a concept uh, by our lead <laughs> of, uh, here, make this thing, and... In like five minutes, I'll have something, but usually it's they already have a purpose, and I'm not told about it sometimes because perhaps it's like either just too far down the line or just something we want to push out. But yeah, most of the time they have a purpose. They uh, have a place, just like the Stillwalker, how it was something we wanted to show off in a very early trailer. And he definitely served his purpose of scaring people. Yeah, I mean, the purpose for the Silt Walker from the beginning was to be like one of the big scary things that the player has to struggle with. Because how do you fight something that big and dangerous without the proper tools for it? Uh, so, yeah. There is the next question, which is actually coming from the Discord, and that is, how do you rec uh, how do you guys create the robots, and what was the inspiration for them? Normally, I would give this question to Kai, but he's not here. Um, but the robots are mostly inspired by stuff like Boston Dynamics nowadays, and all the robots as well that we're mixing into it, because if you have noticed before, a lot of Naked Atmosphere is inspired by Cold War area te um, technology that is mixed into the classic sci-fi formula to make it look a lot more sturdy and like it would actually withstand time and space. I don't know. Chris, what do you think you've used to design the robots and uh, Rain? What have you used as references to sculpt them? I've used a lot of heavy machinery that we see a lot today, but of course, having a Cold War era clunkiness uh, added onto it to make it more unique to our universe. Um, and just like mentioned, Boston Dynamics pretty much has believable and sturdy looking robots in their very early phase. So we take a we take that as a jumping point when designing anything. And um, just keeping that consistent with everything we have or are going to make also uh, is a challenge, but definitely something that can be done and will be really cool to see in the future. Great. Ryan. <laughs> I'd say for many of the robots I've worked on, I've used pretty similar references. Though many have been pretty... Different in size and bulkiness, I know for one, I used quite a few references from, like, uh, sort of uh, decrepit and kind of rusted over tanks as one, and then also a lot of Boston Dynamic stuff for the sort of interior mechanical intricacies. 
They've been a lot of fun to work on, especially the more uh, different varieties that I've had the chance with. They've been a lot of fun to work on. Having that blend of kind of armor, but also the um, the mechanical stuff inside has been a real treat, especially after how much fun the heavy suit was to work on. Great, thank you. Oof. The next one is, how did you guys decide on the design for the logo? The logo was done very early, like we formed as a company after our, we published our first prototype of the game in 2019. Um, and when we became a company, and when Calvin founded the company, we decided we need a logo. <laughs> there was a lot of people posting sketches in Discord. Um, before, eventually, someone made a decent one. Uh, yeah. Chris, do you want to talk about that for a bit? Because I remember uh, <laughs> you also posting a bunch of sketches before we arrived at that final design. Yeah, at first we had um, some really simplistic stuff going on, but I feel like, personally, when doing a logo for a game, I don't know, simplicity is, is cool and all, but I really wanted to make something that, I don't know, seems a little vintage by having a big, scary cool thing on it and uh it's still vague in design it doesn't give away anything for the game but it looks cool and it's very unique and grotesque and i'm very happy with it i think it is it's pretty unique in the market that mostly has only minimalist font logos nowadays and i think it's a bit sad that all of the imagery and it was lost. Like, if I think about it, the only real logo that comes to mind that hasn't completely switched to only font is Assassin's Creed, because they still have, like, the Assassin's symbol in it. But can you guys even remember anything else that doesn't, that still uses anything other than font? You know, everything nowadays is just font and simplified, but we decided to be unique and go back to when things had really cool logos. Yeah, I mean, you want your box to look interesting, or in this case, our Steam banner, or whatever platform we end up launching <laughs> on. Um, great. So, we have... One more question here, which is, uh, what were the main inspirations for the art direction, aside from Dead Space and Star Wars? Uh, so as I said in the beginning, it was mostly Dead Space and Star Wars for the first prototype we did in 2019. And as we went on and developed our art style, more and more references came on top of that. Uh, we started looking at a lot of real world technology, like especially Cold War era, to give it like the sci-fi that we did a non-traditional sci-fi look, so it looked more grounded in reality. There is obviously stuff from really big sci-fi brands like Alien, we looked at that a lot because the similar, very sturdy style. We looked at stuff like... I'm missing words. <laughs> Can anyone quickly take over and list a few other games until I find my words again. Uh, sure. So, let's see, there's like, did you say Alien Isolation? I did. A good one. Um, oh yeah, there's, un there's Underwater as well, which is like a really great movie that people should watch. Uh, Prey was a good game, I don't know if we looked at that one too much. But we did look at Prey. Um, not too much though, because a very sleek design that doesn't really match too much. But the environments are built in a really nice way, so the layout for that was great. And they have the general sense of space horror too. Yeah, I mean there's always um, Fallout for example, is also a good example to look at, because they do occasionally have like sci-fi like elements in it. Uh, Star Citizen. Yes, especially in a technical sense though. 
yeah. because they have a lot of impressing, impressive technology. Even though their game hasn't come out, they've done a lot for the industry by just researching all of this new stuff. So. Um, Car Calvin is also shouting at me that I should name a bunch of other things. <laughs> um, he said sp said I should sp specifically mention the Cold War missile silos, silos and the aircraft carriers, as well as the submarines. Which makes sense, we looked at a lot of submarines because they're basically built the opposite way as uh, spaceships. And we obviously also look at SpaceX and at Na uh, NASA and stuff like that because obviously real spaceships. Uh, but submarines are built in the same way because it's very confined space and it's built to withstand pressure, albeit the other way around, like a lot of pressure outside and very little pressure on the inside. I think that's like a bunch of the main ones that we can talk about. Uh, anyone have anything else that they majorly reference for their work? I personally looked at a lot of um, old Resident Evil stuff and some Silent Hill things because those are my that's my bread and butter when it comes to horror games, especially the old ones. Um, I'm trying to think of anything more modern that I've looked at. Um, I don't think there's much only because I didn't want to like I didn't want to have too much of an inspiration from anything too recent. That's fair. I think the all the Resident Evil titles, for example, are uh, also really great reference audio-wise, because they do a lot of foreshadowing really well. I obviously can't go into Gale's head, but we reference a lot of all the classic survival horror titles for the audio, because we obviously wanted to stay away from just having jump scares and nothing else, um, like a lot of modern, more modern titles do. And the more action-y gameplay that a lot of them run into because they're more shooters than horror games. So looking at those old titles isn't actually a bad thing. Uh, some inspiration I've used both for uh, just critiquing uh, monster designs and uh, horror environments that really fit well. Uh, I go to some obscure body horror monster films from the 80s and 90s, specifically one called Virus, I think was the better of the two. And then a worse one, but I, I just like how cheesy it is. It's called Leviathan. I think that's from like 80s, maybe 70s. It, it's pretty old, but uh, it they were obviously trying to do the thing, but they did not do the thing that well. <laughs> but the environments and designs in those movies are pretty fun and I'll put those on the background while I'm working. That's, actually, that's actually a point. Um, if you look at games outside of the genre, uh, we also look at games that are very sophisticated in their design, like uh, a lot of the Hideo Kojima games, for example, like Metal Gear and Death Stranding later on, they have really great suit designs, they have a really great way of creating a mood that fits the gameplay, and that can be very inspirational, despite it not being a horror game. Although you can like kind of debate that with Death Stranding because it switches violently between a walking simulator and the horror game depending on where you are. Although you can like kind of debate that with Death Stranding. Great. Switches violently And with that one I do have to head out, but thank you for having me. It was Thank you for being great. here. Yeah, of course. Goodbye. Thank you. Do we uh as you can all see, uh, that has ruined the streaming setup. <laughs> um, but uh, we will just continue until the webcam thing is fixed. So, the next question is: the most challenging as what was the most challenging aspect of Samuel's suit design, which is also one from YouTube. I would say, um, like I've uh, stated previously, just making sure it looks believable and functional and making sure the design comes across as unique um, but still familiar. Uh, anything other than that, it was just probably 
color choice too. Uh, while some people might not think like it's too difficult to choose a color, but in this case, it was just we wanted something that stood out from the environment, which is always dark and gray, or it would just be a, a very different color scheme. We wanted a suit that would stand out and be recognizable to the player, of course. So with that, we decided to go with whites and teals, very medical, uh, sterile colors. It is really difficult to like nail implying a profession and implying the use case just by visual design. And I think that's a very overlooked aspect of designing 3D spaces because it all falls flat if you don't have environmental storytelling and tell a story through your objects in the game. You can have the best writing, but if you don't show it as well, then it doesn't work. So yeah. Great. We have one more question from Gensega, and that is Assets are one of the causes for large file sizes in games nowadays. How do you guys deal with this issue for an acceptable file size? Um, since I'm the only one left that works in Engine, I'm going to answer that question because uh, Jeddah unfortunately has other um, responsibilities now because we overran a bit actually. So, um, Optimization is obviously a big issue still, not necessarily because of the performance, even though you also want games to run on as many PCs as possible, even if they're not the newest ones. We just hope you have a big enough hard drive to play the game. No. Um, do you keep file size down by organizing our textures in intelligent ways, because that's one of the most um, impact the highest impact areas um, we optimize our meshes as much as possible so the actual 3d objects without the textures so that are most performant and we compress a lot of stuff on your hard drive like for us I have a giant folder on my desktop uh, which I can't delete uh, but that's obviously the source files so we don't work with the source files in the game so they're going to be a lot smaller they're going to be compressed and it's not going to be as massive as like one of the new Call of Duty titles, for example. We also don't have a big open world. Like we don't have like an o a Witcher style open world that spans like five continents. So we are able to keep our file size down a lot easier than some other games might be able to. Okay. Coco has another question, and Ginsaiga has another one, and I think we're going to cut it after this. So, uh, because we plan for this to be an hour, and we're already a bit over that. So, um, Coco is asking if we have any accidental instances you thought were cool enough to add them into the game as a feature. I honestly can't remember any. Do you guys remember something that you thought just was cool and suggested as a feature? None off the top of my head. I do remember clipping all of them so we could make a montage out of the weirdness that the engine sometimes is. And you've seen that. Like, uh, one of the older videos that we published as a part of this event, uh, is a glitches and bugs montage and if you haven't seen that do so we definitely all died laughing while these happen in real time but yeah i don't think we had any instances of that yet i don't think that won't happen throughout the development but so far it hasn't the last question for today is how is the reason of laid out as in where the crew quarters docking areas bridge etc we can't tell you that yet, um, because it's not public information, but we have like a giant layout plan of where ev every deck is, and that is how we designed the roof up in the first place, like, we had a plan on how everything is organised, and then we designed the form around it, and again and again until we had something that looked good but was also functional. 
again and again and yeah. again. Yeah. Um, do you guys have anything to add to that? Obviously, don't tell them everything. <laughs> Nothing I can add. Um, other than just, uh, we're gonna have a lot of cool monsters, and I'll I'll make sure of that. Indeed, and I'm very much looking forward to interpreting them all to 3D. Great. Um, in this case, uh, thank you all for joining us. It was a blast, even if we're all echoing around in your heads. It's kind of on topic for a horror game, just having mysterious echoes in your head. We still don't quite know what caused this, but it could just be YouTube weirdness quite before Christmas. So, uh, thank you, Jedi, who is gone. <laughs> thank you, Rayan, and thank you, Chris, for joining me. We will end the stream here, and we... We'll end it in three, two, one.